Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Here we are, Romans chapter 8, beginning with verse number 5, and we're going to read down to the end of verse number 13. Romans chapter 8, verse 5. Those who live according to the flesh. Now, every time I read flesh or mention flesh today, although I'm going to go back and forth because I'm not disciplined enough to stay with my theme, though. But when you read flesh, it reads sinful nature. A nature lived according to what the body wants. So, those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires, but those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the Spirit is life and peace. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. You, however, are not in the realm of the flesh, but are in the realm of the Spirit. If indeed the Spirit of God lives in you, and if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. What a categorical statement, very clear statement. But if Christ is in you, then even though your body is subject to death because of sin, the Spirit gives life because of righteousness. And if the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his spirit who lives in you. Therefore, brothers and sisters, we have an obligation, but it is not to the flesh to live according to it. If you live according to the flesh, you will die, but if by the spirit you put to death as vestiges of the body, you will live. There is a lot in our passage, and I cannot deal with all of it this morning. Or my sermon will be an hour and a half long which you all would love, I know. Are you listening? There are two ways to live life. Now, I guess you could divide life up many different ways. But we're talking now about foundationally. We're talking about scripturally. And since your eternal destiny, heaven or hell, is bound up in how you live this life, when you're talking about a scriptural way of dividing life, that's the foundation, that's the basis. And so Paul talks about those two ways of life here. You can live your life according to the sinful nature, or you can live your life according to the Spirit and the Spirit's guidance. And those are the only two ways to live your life. Now, Paul talks about this some in chapter 7, and you know we talked about this a few weeks ago. You can go back in your mind to when we spoke about it. Paul was, was in agony, spiritual agony. He knew how to live the right kind of life. He knew what God wanted him to do. But he was not able to do it. And, and so he knew what the life of the Spirit was supposed to be, but he could not live that life. It was his personal testimony. And who will release me from this body of death? Who will free me from my agony? And then he immediately, because... If you remember, he was given a, 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 a picture of his life over the whole span of his Christian experience. And this is what I was like. This is what I was going through when, before I could yield to the Spirit. So thanks be to God through Jesus Christ. He has given me victory. He has released me from this body of death. And so this picture that Paul painted is a picture of every life lived by every Christian who's ever lived. We know what we should do, but we have difficulty doing it. We know the power of the flesh, of the sinful nature, and we also know what God's, the kind of life He offers to us. And we're fighting to live that right kind of life. Now, we have a secret weapon, and that weapon is the Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Paul says every single believer has been given the Holy Spirit. Every single one. And the Holy Spirit living inside of you can give you the power to live that kind of life. A life in victory over the sin nature. So, ever since Adam and Eve, people have been living a life that's natural to them. A life according to the flesh, to the appetites of the body. Ever since Adam and Eve, we have been living according to the sin nature. But God, through the Holy Spirit, gives us the possibility to have victory over that sinful nature. Let me tell you a little bit more about the sin nature. 
Paul calls it living according to the flesh. It means living according to your appetites. And you have a lot of appetites, don't you? I know I do. Appetites for fame, success, money, violence, sexual pleasure, and yes, Baptist, even food. And drink. And drugs. You know, there are many other sins I could mention here, but I don't have really the time to do it. Our appetites crave all kinds of things. When I was a teenager, my generation said, if it feels good, do it. That is some of the stupidest advice anybody could ever give somebody else. If it feels good, if it's sinful nature wants to do it, go ahead and do it because that kind of Life, that kind of nature, always leads to alcoholism, drug addiction, broken marriages, hurt kids, clogged arteries, and a painful death, an unhappy death. You know, Johnny Depp is one of my favorite actors. I'm giving things right, ripped right out of the headlines, friends, okay? <laughs> Johnny Depp is one of my favorite actors. I mean, I, I just, you know, Pirates of the Caribbean, he's a hilarious guy that's, and he, he's not a bad guy. He's, my opinion is he's a lost guy. Okay? But he's not really a bad guy. He doesn't have a bad heart. But if, if you ask him and Amber Heard whether they were happy or not, I don't think they would tell you they were happy. Because they had been living their lives according to the sinful nature, which always ends in death and destruction. Now Jesus, and we did this through Matthew, and we were in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 7, talks about the broad way that most folks are traveling where there's no resistance. That's why it's the broad way. Everybody's going that direction, but that way leads to destruction. And there's a narrow way. He said the few travel because it's a hard way. And that path leads to light. Now, I don't think Jesus was decreeing that this is the way things had to be. I don't think he was given a prophecy or direction. This is the way life has to be. I simply think he was making an observation. He was seeing people and how they were living their lives, and he was seeing that people were living according to the sinful nature and not according to the Spirit, and the sinful nature was taken to the death, and they were missing out on the great life that could come by the Spirit. So let's go, let's, let me remind you, let's go back. If you are a believer in Jesus Christ, you have the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit lives inside of you. And the Holy Spirit helps you to have power over the sinful life and over the work of death in your life. The Holy Spirit gives you that strength. Now last week, in Matthew's Gospel 28, he talked about the angel appearing to the women at the tomb. And he said, this is what's happened. Jesus is resurrected. And our Lord wants you to go tell his, his disciples, tell his brothers. And then he says something very interesting. It's one of those little mysterious things. I think there's a lot of meaning. I think you see it all through Scripture. He says, now I have told you. And I was wondering about that. Now I have told you. I mean, he didn't want to go. And Jesus, God made him go. And he said, well, now I got it done. What God wanted me to Now I've told you. I don't think that angelic beings are really reluctant to serve God. I think that they do whatever God wants them to do, you know. So I think what he was saying was, I've done my part, now you do your part. I've come and told you, now you do your part, you go tell his brothers. And I think that's what happens all through the spiritual life. We have our part. Now I have told you. Now we begin to yield ourselves to the Spirit to begin to live that life that the Spirit wants us to live. So you can live according to the sinful nature, or you can make a decision to start living according to the Holy Spirit who is working to replace that nature in your life. We have a, a, a man in our church um, who uh, is new to our area, new to our church, lives in the neighborhood I live in, and, and he's, he's a friend now, and I really enjoy talking to him. But he was telling me that he was getting ready to travel across the state of Virginia on US 58, Route 58, which I'll be traveling this week. <laughs> and I told him, I said, you know, back in the day, 
it used to be called Suicide Strip. And I looked it up. You, know, you can go and look up anything. I looked it up, and I found out that the road was widening project was finished in 1991. Where has the time gone? I'm getting old. And it used to be, it used to be, <laughs> it used to be that uh, when you got the Cortland, US 58 was two lanes, just two lanes. And the speed limit was 55, people drove 80. And over the 20 years previous, the 1991, when the, when the road was widened, you had to, from two lanes to four lanes, 107 people had died on that road, and over 1,000 people were injured. And so when you entered US 58 in Cortland, there was a big sign on the side of the road. It said, Suicide Strip. And it had on it the number of people who had died and been injured. That's scary, isn't it? And the road was two lanes, but it wasn't just two lanes. It was like this. <laughs> now, that road's still there because that's one side of the road. The other side is straight and level. <laughs> it's a long story, isn't it, you know? But what, we're, what Jesus told us was, what Paul is talking about here is, that the life is lived according to the sinful nature is like 22 miles of bad road. And who wants to drive 22 miles of bad road? They spent $49 million fixing those 22 miles of bad road. What Paul says is, listen, I want you to understand how life is. There are two ways to live life. Life by the Spirit or life according to the sinful nature. And this life leads to death and this life leads to life. Now, are you listening? There's a third way to live life. I'm throwing you a curve. I told you there were two ways. Now, <laughs> I'm telling you there's three ways. You see, when I zig, you zag, you know? And the, the, the truth of the matter is that, that uh, this text here is teaching truth, and it's hinted at, but it's not a complete truth. Paul says you have to put to death the works of the flesh, the works of the sinful nature. And putting the death there is a progressive, which means it happens over a period of time. So Paul hints at here this idea that when you become a believer in Jesus Christ, your perfection is not instantaneous. Are you with me? And so it takes time to put to death the works of the flesh. Now, Paul talks about this in detail in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. He says, when I wrote to you, Corinthians, I wanted to address you as spiritual. Uh, are, are you with me? Controlled by the Holy Spirit. Living this new kind of life. But I could not because you're still worldly. Now, read there, still controlled by the sinful nature. Mere babies in Christ. So, they are believers because they're babies in Christ. And as he makes clear in chapter 3, as we go on, they have the Holy Spirit, but they're not yet yielded to the Holy Spirit. So they're living that third way. That is a life in between. And you've you got to get this. A life in between. In between being controlled by God and controlled by the sinful nature. A life in between. Paul talks about that life in chapter 7. That's what he's really describing. I know what to do that is right, but I cannot do it, and I'm in agony. So when you're living the life in between, you're in spiritual agony. And you have to begin this process, which takes a lifetime. Now, in the New Testament, this has got a, a name for it, okay? I know these words are not words we use all the time. It's called sanctification. It's one of the principal teachings of the New Testament, that we are slowly made what God wants us to be, or sanctified, or made holy. It happens over our life as we continually yield to the Spirit and the Spirit's leadership in our life. He will put to death, on a progressive basis, the works of the sinful nature, and slowly, over time, 
take control of our lives so we're controlled not by the sinful nature, but by the Holy Spirit. Now, if I talked about how to do this, I've already warned you, it'd be another hour and 45 minutes, okay? But I want to tell you very briefly, and it's not rocket science, it really isn't. I mean, I could talk about it for a long time, but you could say it very briefly, and that'd be enough for you. You read God's Word. You ask the Holy Spirit for the understanding of His Word. And then you make a decision that whatever God's Word says I should do and act and be like, I'm going to do it. Whether I understand it or want to do it, I'm going to do it. And, you know, people say to me, or ask me, Pastor, I want to discover God's will, and I try to help them. But the truth of the matter is, almost every believer knows God's will from His Word, and we don't do it. I mean, why should God show you any more of His will if you're not doing what you already know? I mean, He does because He's a gracious God, but why should He? So you read His Word, you ask the Holy Spirit for understanding, and then, then, then you, you, you make a decision that you're going to do it. Remember now what the angel said. He said... Now, I've done my part. I told you. Now, you do your part. Jesus does the whole thing for us on the cross. Our salvation is totally God's work through the, Holy, through, through the work of Jesus. He died for us. That's enough. But the work of us becoming what God wants us to be is our part. So we read His Word. We ask for understanding. We make a decision we're going to do it. And then, as we pray and as we contemplate our life, we're ruthless with ourselves about how we live and what we do. It's hard to be ruthless with yourself because you like yourself. You love yourself. Being honest with yourself is hard to do. It makes you feel bad about yourself. Well, God doesn't want you feeling bad about yourself, but He does want you to overcome your sin. And He will do that. He will. Uh, one of the greatest cellists, yes, a classical music illustration, one of the greatest cellists of the 20th century was a man named Pablo Casals. And, you know, when I was a kid, I used to watch Ed Sullivan on Sunday night. Yes, I did. Yeah. And I saw Pablo Casals and Ed Sullivan playing the cellos. So I got a chance to at least see him by television play. What a great, great musician. One of the greatest cellists that ever lived. He played into his mid-90s. When he was 90, a reporter asked him, why... At 90, are you still practicing? He said, you know, I think I'm making some progress. <laughs> I hope you're getting this. Whatever age you are, why are you still being ruthless with yourself? Why are you still trying to do what God's will, word says and what His will is for your life? Because you're making progress. So this uh, woman's husband died and had the funeral. And a few days later, she met with um, one of her friends for coffee. And her friend said, that was some funeral. And she said, yes, it cost $20,000. $20,000, yes. It was $5,000 for the funeral and $15,000 for the, for the memorial stone. $15,000? How big was that stone? Oh, about five carats. <laughs> Now listen, I don't think that they had a good marriage. <laughs> that uh, she wasn't really that upset about his death. He probably hadn't been a good husband. And she probably hadn't been a very good wife. And, and that, that ring she had was an indicator of all those years, the 22 miles of bad road they had traveled. And why... Through all that trouble, had they not stopped and said, we can have a better life. We can fix these things. And you can. Because that's the power of the Holy Spirit. When you yield yourself to the Holy Spirit's leadership. Oh, by the way, this is very Trinitarian. Very Trinity. Christ dies on the cross. Then he says, I come and live inside of you by the Holy Spirit. So I do the work of salvation, and he is now me inside of you. 
doing the work of sanctification. See, when you yield your life to the Holy Spirit, He slowly sanctifies you and helps you overcome the power of the sinful nature. There's one more thing, one more thing. And that is that you do what you do because you want to live your life in thanksgiving to God for what He's done for you. Paul said we have an obligation. That obligation is not to the sinful nature. The obligation is to the Holy Spirit, to the Holy Spirit's leadership, and to God. We have an obligation to be thankful for what God has done. So, now listen, wanting to have a better life is great. Wanting to have a, he says, the life of the, of the, of the Holy Spirit, not the sinful nature, but the Holy Spirit, is life and peace. It's a great life. But, but it's more, that you're doing more than trying to live a great life. You, you have a, a Savior who died for you. Who will release me from this body of death? Thanks be to God in Jesus Christ. Praise His name. You, it's more than just wanting to have a better life. You want to live your life in thanksgiving, paying the obligation you have to God for what He's done for you through Jesus. You don't want to be ungrateful. You want to be grateful. And to know that Christ died for me makes me want to be a better person so I can thank Him with my life. Now, uh, I read a story just a few days ago. There was a, a, a 74-year-old man and his wife on their pontoon boat on a, fl- in a, on a lake in Florida. And they were out just having a good Sunday at the noon, and they saw a jet ski going in a circle like this. And so they went over with the pontoon boat, and there was a man and a woman in the water. They pulled the man and woman out of the water, and the man immediately started attacking the 74-year-old man. And the 74-year-old man tried to defend himself, but, you know, that man was like 35 years old. The man was 70, he was having a hard time. And so the, the man's girlfriend pushed the man back into the water to save the 74-year-old man. And the man in the water calmed down, and the 74-year-old man pulled him out of the water, and immediately he started attacking the 74-year-old man again. So the 74-year-old man went down into the, into the boathouse, whatever you call that thing on the boat, I don't know what it's called. I, had, I don't think I've been on the boat since I was 17 years old. Yes, I've lived a sheltered life. <laughs> he went down and said, whatever that thing, the, 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 the cabin <laughs> where the wheel was and came out with a gun and shot him. And so he, they, 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 they investigated and he was cleared of murder because it was self-defense. I guess, you know, what are you going to do? And what, what was going on was that the man was on drugs. And the reason they fell off of this, who gets on a jet ski when they're on drugs? I don't know. I have no idea. But the reason they fell off the jet ski was that the man and the woman were having a fight. And so when he brought him back onto the, onto the pontoon boat, he was still on the drugs, and he didn't understand that somebody was saving his life. And it ended up that the man who saved his life took his life. Does this make any sense to you? Why in the world would you attack somebody who was a saving your life? Why would you do that? Wouldn't you be thankful? Oh, thank you for saving my life. I know I would be. And that's where people are who have a Savior named Jesus, whether they know Christ or not, but are not living a life according to the Spirit, are not living a life of being completely, totally grateful and thankful what God has done, and I don't want to be that person. How about you? Do you want to be that person? Let's pray. <coughs> Heavenly Father, right now we know there's two kinds of life. A life lived according to the sinful nature, a life lived according to the Holy Spirit. Or oh, a third kind of life. A life lived in between. A life which is filled full of spiritual pain because we know what we are and what we are not yet. And Father, I pray right now that every believer here will decide to take your word and whatever it says we should do, we'll do it whether we want to or not. Believing that that's the life you bless. 
oh, and by the way, Father, as I should have said, if we start, we start doing what the Word says, we soon find that it works, and we soon find we like it and want to do it. So we can begin with the Holy Spirit's overwhelming internal power, put to death the works of the sinful nature, and move to being what you want us to be. Father, how can we live any other kind of life but a life controlled of the Spirit, knowing what you've done for us through Jesus? How can we not be thankful and grateful? Now I pray, Father, for those people here or watching online who have not yet made a decision about Jesus and because of this they're not living the life of the Spirit. They're living a life of the sinful nature and the life is a life of death and unhappiness and lack of peace and lack of joy. You have a much better life to give them. If you're that person I'm describing right now, will you pray this prayer with me? Father, I know that I'm a sinner. I've broken your laws and commands. And I pray you'll forgive me because of what Jesus Christ did for me on the cross. And I pray this now, Father, in Jesus' name. If you pray that prayer with me, you're now part of the family of God. Let me know with the card you find in the chair. Put it in the offering plate. Or if you're watching online, talk to uh, one of our online counselors. We'll share with you more about what it means to be a believer in Jesus Christ. Now, Father, we leave this place today with the determination in our mind and heart that we're going to live a life of the Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, everyone. Thanks for watching. Be sure to drop us a like, subscribe, and follow us on social media so you don't miss any future DC Church content.